Pass me my pen and pad and take me to the highest mountain. Leave me there for days, I've got something to shout out loud. The only way I know how is on paper through rhyme. I've been silent for years, now is the time for me to break my silent code. Break loose from vocal cords. I've got emotions locked, I'm about to explode. I need to lay off steam, let people see who I be. And get rid of the imposter that has people deceived. Cause see, she's a happy clapper. Most times I don't have to slap her, she just goes with the flow. And these tracks I need to stop, but that's why nobody knows all the pain that I felt except God. But for some reason, he won't tell. I'll try to spell it out for you. In an album or two, you need to bear with me, please. There's nothing else that I can do, cause I've seen so many things, even when young, that I couldn't tell mom. I need to speak to someone, so hear me out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the name is indeed Mr. Lorraine. And I didn't choose this name, but the name, it chose me. Because if you look at my birth certificate, it states that my name is Lorraine Dengisai Chalemunu, and I was born a female. I've got no intentions of making any changes, but lately, well, the last 10 or 15 years, every time I have a conversation with people over the phone, they always mistake me for a man, or they accuse me of trying to impersonate the real Lorraine. Yes, it is an accusation because if you were mistaken, I could correct you and we could move on. But no, they accuse me of impersonating Lorraine, so it's up to me to prove that I am who I say I really am. And my troubles really began with this whole internet revolution. You know, the banks and service providers decided that they move all the services online and over the phone. So a conversation normally starts the same way and it ends the same way. I'll tell them my name, I'll give them my account details, and then I'm informed that the account in question is actually in the name of a Miss Lorraine Chademunu. I'll tell them, yes, that's correct. And then the second you hand the phone over to her, say, you are speaking to Lorraine, but they'll still ask me, is she there? I don't know. And sometimes when the conversation starts just from the get-go, they start by calling me sir, and does it make a difference if I try and correct them? Oh no, every other second, it's sir this or Mr. that. And there's that insurance company, you know the one that offers cheaper insurance to the females, because apparently they're the sacred drivers. But when I'm speaking to them, my voice suggests that I'm a maniac on the road, <laughs> because they don't believe I am who I say I am. They're like, no, you're not Lorraine. I'm like, yes, I am Lorraine. No, you're not Lorraine. Yes, I am Lorraine. I am not, I am not. 40 love. Mrs. Lorraine has zero challenges remaining. <laughs> so if I'm not Lorraine, then who am I? This is what they call me. Dude, bloke, sir, Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Lawrence, buddy. So you can just take your pick. One day I had a situation where I had a burst tire. This was the middle of rush hour. I had an 11-year-old boss I needed to get to school on time. So after I'd made the necessary arrangements, I returned to my car, and then I called the recovery company. The lady on the other <coughs> end started calling me sir. I tried to correct her. She called me Mr. Lorraine. I told her I'm not Mr. Lorraine, and then I just realized that I had to just be quiet, otherwise I wasn't getting anywhere. Because in these situations, I just have to take the abuse. I literally just have to grow a pair, otherwise I don't get anywhere. So a few minutes later, I got a call from the mechanic. He was on his way. <coughs> so he wanted to speak to the account holder. I said, you are speaking to Lorraine. He's like, oh, this account is in the name of a woman. I said, yes, I am Lorraine. He's like, look, mate, I don't want my time wasted. So I said, do you think I'm a man? Yes, of course you are a bloke. You better have ID when I get there. As you can guess, no ID was required when we were face to face. But these situations, they always occur. And if it's the banks, they'll ask me a lot of security questions. You know the difficult ones that you cannot answer when you're under a lot of stress, like my date of birth, my mother's maiden name, the address that I've lived for for years. But during a stressful situation, I cannot seem to answer this question, so it's access denied. And I'm referred to the fraud department. And sometimes I hear myself speaking in a high-pitched tone so I can just, you know, get that loan. So if I speak in my normal voice, it's definitely not Lorraine who's speaking. But then, as thing happened, this situation ended up coming to a head. 
one day I had an issue with my bank account, so I thought, let me be proactive. Because I knew if I dealt with it over the phone at home, it was always going to end the same way. So I marched into the bank ID in hand, picked up the customer services phone, and as you can guess, once again, I failed those security questions. I forgot my date of birth. I didn't know my address. I didn't know my mother's maiden name. So they said, we're going to refer you to the fraud department, but the best thing for you is to do is to go into a branch with your ID in hand. So I was like, well, you're in luck. I'm already in the branch. So I handed over my ID and gave over the phone to one of the workers in the bank. So they started having their conversation about me. And she looked at me in the corner of her eye. <laughs> Yes, it is a woman. And then you must have said, are you really sure to take a second look? Because she looked again at my breasts. <laughs> a few seconds later, the was comfortable for me. It says, yes, she is a woman. And then they shared a joke at my expense. <laughs> I know. And then the next thing, they concluded their conversation. And all I was told was, yes, you can now access your account. I've never, ever in my life felt so humiliated. Because what I wanted to do that day is take my kit off. <laughs> which I'm going to do right now. <laughs> like, this is really Lorraine. I'm taking everything off. <laughs> That's how upset I was. I felt humiliated. I felt like nothing. Because after I left that bank, I was in tears. I got in my car. I cried for a few minutes. But then, what else could I do? Nothing. And these things just kept going on and on and on. And I even thought to myself before this incident that, you know what? Why did I seek some legal compensation? But then I googled online, there was nothing that I could do because it's not a crime. If somebody had been sexually abusive or racially abusive, then I'd have something to pursue. But this was not a crime. And I thought, you know what? Let me make myself famous. I'll contact the papers, but then the editor of The Sun and I would disagree because I thought my story deserved to be on page three. But clearly, <laughs> we weren't in the same frame of mind. And then what tended to happen was I was silenced. All I did was apologize. Oh, I'm sorry, it's my voice. Or well, I would hide, I would avoid all sorts of phone calls. My husband and my kids would witness me being humiliated, trying to prove I am who I am. Sometimes the phone, they would just hang up on me. Once again, just left in tears. Oh, I'm sorry, it's my voice. But I didn't ask for this voice. This voice is what makes Lorraine. I just kept thinking to myself, why would I have to speak in a high-pitched voice just to get that long? If people cannot accept who I am, then it's their problem, not mine. So constantly, I just hid and hid. And then I just thought to myself, now, I really don't care what happens. If I speak to you and I tell you I'm Lorraine, if you don't believe it, then it's your problem. But what assumptions do people make about others? And they make their decisions based on those assumptions. Because even if I sought to clarify to people that I am who I am, they still would not believe me. But what assumptions do you make about people and make decisions based on those assumptions? So what I've decided now, I use that voice, I found my therapy. I perform rap, poetry. I've even discovered comedy. Because mm -hmm. fortunately, the comedy just writes itself. All I have to do is wake up, have a converse, conversation <laughs> over the phone with someone. I even had a colleague of mine who I used to just deal with over the phone. So she said to me, you know what, when I first spoke to you, I thought, oh, he sounds like a nice guy. Shame his mother wanted a girl, but she thought I'd name him Lorraine anyway. <laughs> and even the other day, I was at work in the hospital. I was having a conversation with the doctor, but it was a conversation that we were better off having face to face. So she said, oh, I'm coming to you, but how am I going to know who you are? I said, I've got dreadlocks. I've just tied my hair up today. So she walked in the department and she was looking for a man with dreadlocks. She couldn't find, so I just gave her a couple of more minutes and then I walked to her. She's like, oh, I was speaking to this man with dreadlocks, but I don't know who he is. I was like, you're speaking to me. She's like, oh, I'm really sorry. She had to apologize. But then, you know, it's just the way it is. So now these days, if somebody, you know, comes to me or if I'm on the phone and they ask for my name, I tell them it's Lorraine and they ask me, or how are you spelling it? Well, I'll tell them something ridiculous like, Al is for laboriousness. O is for offensiveness. R for ruthlessness. A for awesomeness. I is for itchiness. N is for 
November. <laughs> and E is for egg-headedness. But I've just realized I just have to accept that I am who I am, and this voice is what makes Lorraine. So I'll leave you with this quote from Teach Nat Han, which says, to be beautiful means to accept yourself. You don't need to be accepted by others. You need to accept yourself. So the rest of the kit will come off. Because <laughs> this is Lorraine. And now to searching for that place to pour the content on my soul, what's my cup of a flow with words and told if silence was really gold, I'd have more than I can stop. But if the truth be told, I actually feel robbed of my freedom of expression. I have got no rights. In a heated situation, I wouldn't survive. These emotions grab a hold of me. I'll start to choke, even tears fill my eyes for reasons I know. Are there things I don't want found out of about me? I maybe think I'll be transparent if I started to speak, so I'll blend with the background. I'm not here, you can even hear the sound of a pin drop. When will I tell it like it is? When will I stand for what I believe? I beg you, you need to hold on, please. Let me deal with my demons before you ask my opinion, or I'll only tell you what you want to be hearing, so hear me out. Thank you. <laughs>